part two chapter six section seven of the possessed by fyodor dostoevsky translated by constance garnett this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two chapter six fyodor stepanovitch is busy section seven he had probably been very busy that day on all sorts of errands and probably with success which was reflected in the self-satisfied expression of his face when at six o'clock that evening he turned up at stavrogin's but he was not at once admitted stavrogin had just locked himself in the study with mavriki nikolaevitch this news instantly made pyotr stepanovitch anxious he seated himself close to the study door to wait for the visitor to go away he could hear conversation but could not catch the words the visit did not last long soon he heard a noise the sound of an extremely loud and abrupt voice then the door opened and mavriki nikolaevitch came out with a very pale face he did not notice pyotr stepanovitch and quickly passed by pyotr stepanovitch instantly ran into the study i cannot omit a detailed account of the very brief interview that had taken place between the two rivals an interview which might well have seemed impossible under the circumstances but which had yet taken place this is how it had come about nikolai vsyevolodovitch had been enjoying an after-dinner nap on the couch in his study when alexey yegorytch had announced the unexpected visitor hearing the name he had positively leapt up unwilling to believe it but soon a smile gleamed on his lips a smile of haughty triumph and at the same time of a blank incredulous wonder the visitor mavriki nikolaevitch seemed struck by the expression of that smile as he came in anyway he stood still in the middle of the room as though uncertain whether to come further in or to turn back stavrogin succeeded at once in transforming the expression of his face and with an air of grave surprise took a step towards him the visitor did not take his outstretched hand but awkwardly moved a chair and not uttering a word sat down without waiting for his host to do so nikolai vsyevolodovitch sat down on the sofa facing him obliquely and looking at mavriki nikolaevitch waited in silence if you can marry lizaveta nikolaevna mavriki nikolaevitch brought out suddenly at last and what was most curious it was impossible to tell from his tone whether it was an entreaty a recommendation a surrender or a command stavrogin still remained silent but the visitor had evidently said all he had come to say and gazed at him persistently waiting for an answer if i am not mistaken but it's quite certain lizaveta nikolaevna is already betrothed to you stavrogin said at last promised and betrothed mavriki nikolaevitch assented firmly and clearly you have quarrelled excuse me mavriki nikolaevitch no she loves and respects me those are her words her words are more precious than anything of that there can be no doubt but let me tell you if she were standing in the church at her wedding and you were to call her she'd give up me and every one and go to you from the wedding yes and after the wedding aren't you making a mistake no under her persistent sincere and intense hatred for you love is flashing out at every moment and madness the sincerest infinite love and madness on the contrary behind the love she feels for me which is sincere too every moment there are flashes of hatred the most intense hatred i could never have fancied all these transitions before but i wonder though how could you come here and dispose of the hand of lizaveta nikolaevna have you the right to do so has she authorized you mavriki nikolaevitch frowned and for a minute he looked down that's all words on your part he brought out suddenly words of revenge and triumph i am sure you can read between the lines and is this the time for petty vanity haven't you satisfaction enough must i really dot my eyes and go into it all very well i will dot my eyes if you are so anxious for my humiliation i have no right it's impossible for me to be authorized lizaveta nikolaevna knows nothing about it and her betrothed has finally lost his senses and is only fit for a madhouse and to crown everything has come to tell you so himself you are the only man in the world who can make her happy and i am the one to make her unhappy you are trying to get her you are pursuing her but i don't know why you won't marry her 
if it's because of a lover's quarrel abroad and i must be sacrificed to end it sacrifice me she is too unhappy and i can't endure it my words are not a sanction not a prescription and so it's no slur on your pride if you care to take my place at the altar you can do it without any sanction from me and there is no ground for me to come to you with a mad proposal especially as our marriage is utterly impossible after the step i am taking now i cannot lead her to the altar feeling myself an abject wretch what i am doing here and my handing her over to you perhaps her bitterest foe is to my mind something so abject that i shall never get over it will you shoot yourself on our wedding day no much later why stain her bridal dress with my blood perhaps i shall not shoot myself at all either now or later i suppose you want to comfort me by saying that you what would the blood of one more mean to you he turned pale and his eyes gleamed a minute of silence followed excuse me for the questions i've asked you stavrogin began again some of them i had no business to ask you but one of them i think i have every right to put to you tell me what facts have led you to form a conclusion as to my feelings for lizaveta nikolaevna i mean to a conviction of a degree of feeling on my part as would justify your coming here and risking such a proposal what mavrika nikolaevitch positively started haven't you been trying to win her aren't you trying to win her and don't you want to win her generally speaking i can't speak of my feeling for this woman or that to a third person or to any one except the woman herself you must excuse it it's a constitutional peculiarity but to make up for it i'll tell you the truth about everything else i am married and it's impossible for me either to marry or to try to win any one mavriky nikolaevitch was so astounded that he started back in his chair and for some time stared fixedly into stavrogin's face only fancy i never thought of that he muttered you said then that morning that you were not married and so i believed you were not married he turned terribly pale suddenly he brought his fist down on the table with all his might if after that confession you don't leave lizaveta nikolaevna alone if you make her unhappy i'll kill you with my stick like a dog in a ditch he jumped up and walked quickly out of the room pyotr stepanovitch running in found his host in a most unexpected frame of mind ah it's you stavrogin laughed loudly his laughter seemed to be provoked simply by the appearance of pyotr stepanovitch as he ran in with such impulsive curiosity were you listening at the door wait a bit what have you come about i promised you something didn't i ah bah i remember to meet our fellows let us go i am delighted you couldn't have thought of anything more appropriate he snatched up his hat and they both went at once out of the house are you laughing beforehand at the prospect of seeing our fellows chirped gaily pyotr stepanovitch dodging round him with obsequious alacrity at one moment trying to walk beside his companion on the narrow brick pavement and at the next running right into the mud of the road for stavrogin walked in the middle of the pavement without observing that he left no room for any one else i am not laughing at all he answered loudly and gaily on the contrary i am sure that you have the most serious set of people there surly dullards as you once deigned to express it nothing is more amusing sometimes than a surly dullard ah you mean mavriky nikolaevitch i am convinced he came to give up his betrothed to you eh i egged him on to do it indirectly would you believe it and if he doesn't give her up we'll take her anyway won't we eh pyotr stepanovitch knew no doubt that he was running some risk in venturing on such sallies but when he was excited he preferred to risk anything rather than to remain in uncertainty stavrogin only laughed you still reckon you'll help me he asked if you call me but you know there's one way and the best one do i know your way oh no that's a secret for the time only remember a secret has its place i know what it costs stavrogin muttered to himself but he restrained himself and was silent what it costs what did you say pyotr stepanovitch was startled i said damn you and your secret you'd better be telling me who will be there i know that we are going to a name-day party but who will be there oh all sorts even kirillov all members of circles hang it all you are in a hurry there's not one circle formed yet 
how did you manage to distribute so many manifestos then where we are going only four are members of the circle the others on probation are spying on one another with jealous eagerness and bring reports to me they are a trustworthy set it's all material which we must organize and then we must clear out but you wrote the rules yourself there's no need to explain are things going badly then is there a hitch going couldn't be better it will amuse you the first thing which has a tremendous effect is giving them titles nothing has more influence than a title i invent ranks and duties on purpose i have secretaries secret spies treasurers presidents registrars their assistants they like it awfully it's taken capitally then the next force is sentimentalism of course you know amongst us socialism spreads principally through sentimentalism but the trouble is these lieutenants who bite sometimes you put your foot in it then come the out-and-out -out rogues well they are a good sort if you like and sometimes very useful but they waste a lot of one's time they want incessant looking after and the most important force of all the cement that holds everything together is their being ashamed of having an opinion of their own that is a force and whose work is it whose precious achievement is it that not one idea of their own is left in their heads they think originality a disgrace if so why do you take so much trouble why if people lie simply gaping at every one how can you resist annexing them can you seriously refuse to believe in the possibility of success yes you have the faith but one wants will it's just with people like this that success is possible i tell you i could make them go through fire one has only to din it into them that they are not advanced enough the fools reproach me that i have taken in every one here over the central committee and the innumerable branches you once blamed me for it yourself but where's the deception you and i are the central committee and there will be as many branches as we like and always the same sort of rabble raw material even they will be of use and you are still reckoning on me you are the chief you are the head i shall only be a subordinate your secretary we shall take to our bark you know the oars are of maple the sails are of silk at the helm sits a fair maiden lizaveta nikolaevna hang it how does it go in the ballad he is stuck laughed stavrogin no i'd better give you my version there you reckon on your fingers the forces that make up the circles all that business of titles and sentimentalism is a very good cement but there is something better persuade four members of the circle to do for a fifth on the pretence that he is a traitor and you'll tie them all together with the blood they've shed as though it were a knot they'll be your slaves they won't dare to rebel or call you to account ha 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 but you you shall pay for those words pyotr stepanovitch thought to himself and this very evening in fact you go too far this or something like this must have been pyotr stepanovitch's reflection they were approaching virginsky's house you've represented me no doubt as a member from abroad an inspector in connection with the international stavrogin asked suddenly no not an inspector you won't be an inspector but you are one of the original members from abroad who knows the most important secrets that's your role you are going to speak of course what's put that idea into your head now you are bound to speak stavrogin positively stood still in the middle of the street in surprise not far from a street lamp pyotr stepanovitch faced his scrutiny calmly and defiantly stavrogin cursed and went on and are you going to speak he suddenly asked pyotr stepanovitch no i am going to listen to you damn you you really are giving me an idea what idea pyotr stepanovitch asked quickly perhaps i will speak there but afterwards i will give you a hiding and a sound one too you know by the way i told karmazinov this morning that you said he ought to be thrashed and not simply as a form but to hurt as they flog peasants but i never said such a thing ha ha no matter c'est non et vero well thanks i am truly obliged and another thing do you know karmazinov says that the essence of our creed is the negation of honour and that by the open advocacy of a right to be dishonourable a russian can be won over more easily than by anything an excellent saying golden words cried stavrogin he's hit the mark there the right to dishonour why they'd all flock to us for that not one would stay behind 
and listen verkovensky you are not one of the higher police are you any one who has a question like that in his mind doesn't utter it i understand but we are by ourselves no so far i am not one of the higher police enough here we are compose your features stavrogin i always do mine when i go in a gloomy expression that's all nothing more is wanted it's a very simple business end of chapter six recording by expatriate in bangor maine